reported by Will's mother, our own Marla Miller. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Doug. Well, after nearly two years of getting Will treated, my husband and I thought we knew all about leukemia. But when the cancer came back and Will was transplanted with his brother's bone marrow, we learned a whole new set of rules, but not as many as patients had just a few years ago. It wasn't too many years ago that bone marrow transplants involved a team of doctors and nurses working outside a sterile bubble. Of course, the patient was inside, and the patient had to be sterile, too. To try to sterilize a person is a very difficult um, concept, and it, it's not particularly pleasant, particularly the things that you need to take orally to try to sterilize the gut. But as you've seen, my son Will's transplant involved simply allowing a bag of bone marrow, which looks like blood, to drip into his bloodstream. Instead of a sterile bubble, Will's protection is... Up. Soap bubbles. And amazingly enough, this simple act of hygiene and keeping the patient in an isolation room has replaced all the hoses, spacesuits, and plastic. Studies have shown that in the final analysis, it didn't make any difference in the ultimate outcome. There were other rules to keep Will germ free. When the recreation therapist brought in Play-Doh, it had to be brand new. Old Play-Doh can harbor germs. Everything brought into isolation should be germ-free, which is why Will's father cleaned off a computer with alcohol before bringing it into Will's room. And Will's best friend, Alexa, could visit him if she wasn't sick. One of the many medicines Will had to take following his transplant comes particularly well packaged, and it should. It costs $267 just for this little bottle. It's an anti-rejection drug called cyclosporin, and the first time we gave it to Will, we figure we went through about $70 worth because it kept throwing it up. But we finally got the medicine to go down with Pepsi. We use peanut butter to coat his pills. My nose. You know. All these tricks and rules are now being learned by Michelle Duran because her five-year-old daughter, Alex, will undergo a bone marrow transplant next month. The donor, her four-month-old brother, Isaiah. You never think it's going to happen to you. You know, I'd see the St. Jude kids on TV and I'd think, oh, those poor people, how can they handle it and stuff. And, but yet it was happening to me at the same time and I thought I was going to go crazy. But cancer parents don't go crazy. They're too busy. And even after Isaiah was found to match his sister, Michelle had the presence of mind amid all the turmoil to get the rest of the family tested and entered in the National Bone Marrow Registry. All because of Alex and because um, it was caught to my attention that a lot of Hispanics are not aware. In fact, Hispanics make up only 6.5% of the nation's bone marrow registry. And as a doctor who performs transplants, Stanford professor Michael Amelon knows the anguish of treating patients who desperately search for but never find a match. In that circumstance, you're kind of feeling very helpless. And there's someone who has a disease which is potentially treatable, um, but we just can't make that treatment available. It's a very difficult situation to be in. Until we found out that Will's brother was a match, our family faced that scary question. And you don't forget that fear. My husband Lance started a home page for Will on the internet, where anyone with a modem can read Will's story and find out how to become a bone marrow donor. Will is home now, and he looks very different. His hair is growing in, but his anti-rejection medicine has darkened it from blonde to brown. We joke that Will is under house arrest because his new bone marrow can't yet fight off germs, so he stays home. His friends come visit him, and of course, they wash their hands. But for Will, no school, movies, grocery store, or malls. There's another lap or silly. No houseplants or flowers are allowed, but he can play outside. No pets either, but Will does visit some nearby horses, always wearing his mask. No, I hate the as for big brother David, who gave Will his bone marrow, he's gotten very good at video games, and he'll sharply lecture any adult who expresses fear about donating bone marrow. Tomorrow, how some parents are planning to protect their babies against leukemia even before they're born. Well, if you are interested in joining the Bone Marrow Registry, here's the phone number, 800 Marrow 2 Once you're tested and registered, you won't be contacted unless your marrow matches someone who needs it. If four-month-old Isaiah can save a life, so can you. And if you want to keep up with Will's story, here's the address of his webpage. It is www.detente.com.
facebook.com slash Will. My husband Lance updates it every few days. We've got an email from people all over the world. It's just been really a great, a great thing that he's done. And these kids are so brave. Oh, thank you. Actually, Will takes it all for granted. David, I think, has had probably the tougher adjustment. He knew he was going to be getting a needle. <laughs> And one of the things we're trying to do is uh, through your web page and the series is to, to get information out to people about bone right. marrow transplant, getting tested and uh, donating. A lot of people, I think, are still under the impression that bone marrow transplants are still experimental. They are accepted. We had no trouble getting payment from our insurance. It was completely covered, which was nice. Other parents, we do hear stories. Sometimes there are difficulties. I'll tell you, one thing that was really troublesome was another family that had to go through the registry and search for a match and it costs thirty thousand dollars i believe and i believe insurance would pay for just the first third the first part mm -hmm. of the search which would be very frustrating because if the first search you found something but you couldn't continue with it that was difficult very enlightening thank series. you very Thanks. much all this week, we've been bringing you Will's story. And Will's two-year battle with leukemia. And tonight, in the final part of her series, reporter Marla Miller shows us how some parents are preparing to fight the disease, just in case. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Doug. Tonight's report is a little bit different. Over the past three days, you've met my son, Will, and seen him undergo a bone marrow transplant. And he's lucky. He had a donor. His